Hello, Rim of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. <clears throat> we want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 433. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hello, friends. Here we are. The night before was a horrible bunch of storms, um, but God was so good to us. We didn't have anything come near our homes. We didn't have anything around the, the buildings, and he is. I just want to give him glory because he's so faithful, guys. And he can protect his people in the midst of a storm. And we are praying, ask you guys to pray with us for everybody on on past to the east that's still in the, the line of these storms. There were some, some powerful winds and uh, tornadoes. And so we're just thankful that everything's okay and give God all the glory, don't we? Yes, we do. You know, we're in the middle of such um, a bunch of activity. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen so many things kind of line up at once, and I wanted to talk about that some today and to give you some hope. You know, the first thing I wanted to talk about is what's all over everything, uh, where Joe Biden declared Easter Sunday as Transgender Day of Visibility. And and it is, you know, for, for the Christians that don't understand where Easter came from, not the resurrection of Jesus. Not, not the Passover, where God's Word directs us to uh, remember, but Easter and all of its occult significance. All Joe Biden did was he, he just announced what was really going on. Yeah. That, that's all it was. It's, it's part of God just bringing the truth to the surface. Now, somebody that's never heard of where Easter came from and the bunnies and the eggs and all that, that would be, and, and it would be... Um, so offensive to anybody thinking that that he would defile this holy day and yeah. and from if he's a, a catholic you would you would think that 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 would be such a defilement wouldn't you well then i think one of the first things i said when uh when i when you had told me that was that if we're about to see if the catholic church is 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 responsive anyway because they should excommunicate him over that because he basically equated Jesus coming victorious out of death, hell, and the grave, coming out of the tomb with a transgender person coming out of the closet. Mm -hmm. But when you understand the pagan origin of Easter, it has nothing to do with the resurrection of Christ. It, 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 it connects to the, the old religions that most of their, their, uh, uh, their priests were transgender. Um, I looked at a... Uh, Academus education site it said ancient Mesopotamian transgender and non-binary entities and it says the most highly venerated deity in ancient Mesopotamia was Inanna who was also known as Ishtar after the two were merged she was also known as the queen of heaven and was the goddess of sex war and justice and she's also the whore of Babylon <laughs> and so so this is just showing I believe they're just using Joe Biden as a puppet. Yeah, he's been somebody they've used to to get horrible things done, and and we know that he doesn't have the mental clarity to be determining anything on him his own. Well, I think they've also revealed that the entire thing between the LGBT movement and there's a lot of other movements that are coalescing with this. Uh, these are these are the priests of darkness. That they are neo pagan priests mm -hmm. that are wanting to displace the Judeo Christian heritage over America and the West. They're wanting to return. Almost, uh, I, I, I see parallels. Nazi Germany, as the Nazis were taking over, they had rejected uh, the the Protestant uh, ethic that Martin Luther and, and the Protestant movement had brought into Germany. And the entire Nazi movement was a neo-pagan movement. They had rejected Christianity, and they had went back to the old gods. That was the whole thing about the Aryans and the old gods and all the occult rituals they were doing. They're doing the same thing today, Mary. Mm -hmm. Well, and they'll always, what, what I was going to discuss during this podcast is to show you how they will always build power and use anything that they can. You know, back in 2005 when... 
uh, a witch told me that if I survived, you know, I'd be, I never have to worry about anything. But it, and the, her um, implication, uh, she was implying that okay, they're going to send everything they got at you, and so we'll, you know, kind of laughing like like you're going to make it, and um, so that's that was one of the reasons I went into the middle of them when I knew where they were at, is I thought, we'll just see who's God's bigger. Yeah. And, and because I thought, if you're coming after me, I don't want you on my property. I don't want you after my animals. I don't want you. And so I'll just come to where you are. Um, but we, and I didn't even know at that time, you know, we found out so many things as we've gone along that that was um, part of a feast of Hecate. It was... Tisha B'Av, when the godly things are supposed to be destroyed. Yeah. There was and the this big Israel convergence mor- of all these things coming together. Yeah, it was. And they'll always try to use a convergence of things to build power. And so I, I believe one of the reasons it was important for Joe Biden to do this for the occult side is because he's he was just making a declaration uh, to whether the Christians knew it or not, if you celebrate this day with bunnies and Easter eggs. You're joining right with what we need you to do, and and we're going to build power from every one of you that hunts an Easter egg. Because that's how they do. If we could ever get people to see how the kingdom of darkness operates and builds power, it's getting people to sin. And whether whether you call that that entity uh, Easter you call it uh, Samarimus. You call it Inanna. Ishtar. I mean, it, Ishtar. It, it's all it, uh, Ashtaroth. It's mm-hmm. uh, uh, Diana of the Ephesians. It's all the exact same entity. Yeah, it's like the hot cross buns that they bake for Easter. Yeah, that's all. That's from ancient stuff. And so, if we can get enough Christians, and the, and maybe this, maybe God um, is going to take this what Joe Biden did to cause the Christians to raise up. Because any Christian, I know years ago when we were doing Easter on Sunday and we did the baskets and the eggs and everything, just like everybody else, I would have been appalled at that. Mm-hmm. And so so I believe God can use that to make Christians that aren't aware of how Satan's deceived us to start looking. Yeah. And if we're, and you know, uh, it goes back, it's like Zev Parat shared in, in his book on overcoming the Chaldean spirit that it was, there was a big debate uh, among the uh, Antonician fathers of when to celebrate uh, the birth of Christ and those in Asia Minor. And I, I thought this was so significant. Those in Asia Minor, which is the actually all the churches that Jesus wrote to in the book of Revelation, all were in Asia Minor. Okay. Mm-hmm. They stuck to the apostles' doctrine of celebrating the death of Jesus with Passover, okay, and they and and so, but there were coming out of Rome. There was a bishop in Rome say, "Listen, no, we're we're going to do it, and it's going to be with the equinox, and it's always going to fall on Sunday." It was Constantine that that said, "Listen, emperor decree, we're we're doing it on Sunday, and it's you know so many days after the spring equinox, yada yada yada." And if you don't do it, I'm going to kill you. I mean, that's that was Constantine's basic thing. But uh, there, and a lot of them ended up becoming Anabaptists, and they, they fled from Roman rule so that they could actually keep the word of God. We don't realize that it was an emperor that changed and, and even called it Easter, confusing Jesus with another form of Mithra, which is the same thing as Tammuz and, and, and so forth. And yet we'll fight, uh, we'll fight down to the mat over the right to do it, not even understanding the origin of it. The early church, and all the way through, they celebrated and they remembered the death of Jesus on Passover. Now, if we're going to celebrate his resurrection, it should be three days after Passover every year. It, it should just be like clockwork. But th- this is how sneaky the enemy works, on, on, and, and I, I think it's this way, not just with like with Easter and Christmas, but Mary, how many times has the enemy uh, has got something in, and then if we do it long enough, it becomes a tradition to us, and we will fight for that tradition over the Word of God. And it can be a myriad of things. I mean, the, the church has, has, has so done that. You know, I, I came uh, out of a denomination as, as a kid, that uh, ministers should be clean face; they should never have beards, and and that that was their tradition, and and they would try to come up with scriptures, even though every every Hebrew man uh, in the in the Bible had a beard. 
and they even forgot many out of their own traditions. Some of the great Baptist preachers, Spurgeon, Moody, and all those, and they all had beards. But they judged you not based on the Word of God, but on the tradition, and they would try to nitpick scriptures to justify their stance. I, th- I think one of the things we're going to have to do in the days ahead, we're going to have to go back to the simplicity of the Word and the full counsel of God. Mm-hmm. And this is a day and an hour that we need to realize the enemy has crept in every place. And, and I have never seen the enemy creep in quicker than he has, like with the Hebraic Roots Movement, that it's almost like a pharisaicalism in, in many aspects. They get into legalism, uh, and they forget who Jesus is. Let me tell you something. The minute, the minute you leave Jesus, the true Jesus of the Bible, you're following another gospel. And uh, we need to look at that in everything that we do. Right. And, and you'll see as we go down through these things, um, just how it just reveals how Satan strategizes. And he's yes. been doing this forever. He's very good at it. He plays the long game. And while we have attention deficit disorder, he's playing the long game. Well, you know, he studied humanity forever. And he knows weaknesses. Um, I, I do believe... Um, that the third of the angels that fell with Lucifer, I, I believe they were the choir. Yeah, I do too. And, and I think that, that that anointing that was there uh, when they were in heaven, I think that that came to the music that we have. That's why, I like, well, for one of the things for me was so difficult to give up Christmas, even though I looked at the information, I thought, okay, this can't be pleasing to God, was that music was intertwined in me. Mm-hmm. They Satan can do something with music, um, it's it's just a, a horrible way he's defiled it, but he uses music to absolutely intertwine in your emotions because that was one of the things that I had such a hard time was was the songs. Yeah. Well, when you when you look at music as a whole, music activates the other the creative side of your brain, so it bypasses the logic side where you filter right from wrong and everything else. And it will directly influence emotion that you can, you can play a song. And, it, and that, that guys, this is why it's so important. Beware of what you listen to. Uh, I, I saw guys when I was in the military, they listened to cheating songs all day long. And next thing you know, they're cheating on their wives. Or, they, or, or there are songs that will uh, cause people just to be angry all the time. And a lot of the hard rock will do that to where they're just, they're, they're, and they don't even know why they're angry. It just, it just facilitates this mm-hmm. because it bypasses all the filters of the logical side of your brain and it manipulates the emotion. And emotions can be very fickle, very, very fickle. Uh, I remember listening to a story years ago uh, that they were trying to show how just a perspective can change your emotions. You're on, you're on this train. Uh, up in New York, and this guy's just sitting there in a stupor, and his kids are just creating havoc in this car. And the first thing you want to you want to say is, why isn't this guy taking care of these kids? I mean, they're they're causing havoc. They almost had people in tears. And then he turned to somebody and said, "I'm sorry, but my wife just died." Can you see how that emotion all of a sudden? Let's help this guy. Mm-hmm. Without information, without the logical side. Mm-hmm. Emotion can be so manipulated, and the, the enemy is going to use that emotion. It's, it, he's going to use he it against us all the mm-hmm. time. The will, the mind, and the emotion are the playground of the second heaven entities that have fallen. Mm-hmm. And they can use music as a part of that. That's why, too, listening to the correct things, listening and I mean, praise and, and making, that's why the Apostle Paul said, you know, to, to make melody in your heart and, and mm-hmm. to sing praises and, and, and think on these things and sing these things is because it, gives, it can give you strength in the middle of darkness. That it, it can boast your faith when the enemy is broadcasting darkness and gloom and fear then I can connect my logical side with my creative side and the Spirit of God can move and I can begin singing songs of deliverance at the midnight hour. That's right. And I can actually, instead of the enemy using this stuff against us, I can learn how to use it against him. That's right. Well, and we've, you know, we've all got to, to make our way out of Babylon. Yeah. And, and, and I've been saying that forever. We've got to get out of Babylon and Egypt. Uh, but while I'm in it, because in this nation you're surrounded by it. Those, in every nation those you're surrounded principalities by it. Yep. have moved here and are working overtime. 
uh, but we can separate from them. You know, I started uh, looking back years ago, I started looking at the Christmas songs, and it's hard to find one that doesn't talk about angels singing. And so then you have to wonder, well, if, if there are angels singing, if they fell with Lucifer, what well, you know, they're there yeah. to influence. Uh, and this, this is just my opinion. Um, Lester Summerall was the first one that I have ever heard say that he, he thought that the choir fell with Lucifer because there's no mention in the Bible of angels singing. And that's they why announce the, they. Well, that's why we see, like in the Psalms and mm-hmm. stuff, all of a sudden there's a new song because there's a new choir that has been redeemed. Mm-hmm. And so we, we one day we're going to replace the choir in heaven. That Mary, I can't, I can't wait. There's we're going to be sit, standing on that sea of glass, and there's going to be beyond count the millions and millions of believers singing praise to the Lamb. Well, and let's just say this: even right here, right now on the earth. When believers get together and are singing a song that is in perfect alignment with the Scripture, that that power so over overtakes anything that the enemy can do with anything. Yes, that that's what we have to keep our eye on because we're we're going to be discussing things and you think, oh my word, what's coming? But just keep in your mind because this is this is what I've done for almost thirty years is I've seen God override all this stuff. With, yeah. He uses us to pray. He wants us to take the authority that Jesus gave us, and he wants us to stand and pray and show the unbeliever that our God's greater. That's right. That the greater one lives on the inside of us. And, you know, sometimes I think we forget when the New Testament was penned and, and scriptures like, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The church was a persecuted church. They were being persecuted by Rome. They were being persecuted by the, uh, by the Jews that had rejected Jesus. I mean, on every single front, they were being persecuted because the entire pagan culture, it's, it's, it, it, we're going to... Mary, I've heard preachers say forever that we need to return back to the book of Acts. Well, baby, we're about getting ready there because the, in the book of Acts, it was a pagan society that everything was intertwined with paganism and that when you as a Gentile accepted Jesus, you had to leave all of that behind and walk in the kingdom of God. And there was this, there was not, there was not gray, there was this black and white that these are the things I'm doing for God. And you were persecuted by your community. You were persecuted by your own family. I mean, just all these things. And you had to take a stand for Jesus. In fact, uh, Rome went so far as to say, if you're a Christian, you don't have the right to own property. You don't have a right to have a business. You don't have a right. And Mary, what are we seeing out of the left right now? We're seeing, well, if you're a Christian, you can't be in politics. If you have, if you're a Christian, you shouldn't be able to do this. If you're a Christian, you shouldn't. It's the echoes of the ancient paganism are coming back in. Mm-hmm. But you know what? We can, we can develop our, there's enough of us, we can develop our own economy. We can develop our own systems of things. Yeah, that's right. And I, I don't believe, uh, I think a lot of people are saying there, there's a rebirthing of America down the road going to take place. I believe I heard years ago God tell me that he was going to take America back. But there, it's going to be a rough this, road. He showed me this judgment's coming, and he told me to pray and to get others to pray so that judgment could be averted if the people would repent. And so that's that's the problem right now is, is that I, I see a lot of people repenting, but I also see the majority of what I consider what is called the body of Christ is not repenting at all. As a matter of fact, a large number are saying you don't have to repent. They're 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 either they're they're not of the body, which I th- I think that um, John MacArthur now he's he's a Calvinist, but so this is interesting for a Calvinist to say uh, in his book on the gospel according to Jesus said the problem with the Baptist church is ninety percent of them aren't saved. Well, and, and which is something for a I, Calvinist I to say. I do think it's something that we have to pray about for people that for the you know that they know the real Jesus and not yeah. not a, a false Jesus that they've been presented with. If we've been presented with another gospel of easy believism, I mean, we've been dealing with this ever since uh, John Wesley had to wrestle with that in his day, that it's easy believism, there's no true conversion. Uh, one of his protégés, Fletcher, I've got his four-volume set on, on coming against easy believism, that there has to be this wrestling with God and coming to grips with, with our sin and coming to grips with the sacrifice that Jesus made. We, we, we need, and I think that maybe with what's coming and what we see in the book of Joel, 
is going to be this wrestling with God, except instead of Jacob grabbing God, God's getting ready to grab those that uh, that say they follow him. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of that wrestling, God touched the hollow of his thigh, and from that day forward, he had a different walk. And well, we that, have to have a different walk in this day and age. <laughs> we do, and there, there has to be this transformation. And if, we, if, if we're in a church, and if we had an experience with God that was not transformative, you better question whose Kool-Aid you've been drinking because it wasn't the gospel of the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. There is a transformation. You're delivered from the, from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. There's a new creation. And if that new creation hasn't happened and it doesn't have that new nature that wants to keep the commandments of God and wants to honor God and be separate from Babylon, we've got to question where we really are with God. And I, I think that if God has to use the, the ascending of paganism and things turning bad to wake up the body, he's more concerned about reaping the harvest of a pure body than he is with our creature comforts. Oh, for sure. You know, there's there's just been too much emphasis put on uh, our wants instead of knowing that God's going to take care of our needs. And sometimes our needs are different than our wants. Oh, and I, and I, I'm not against somebody having a nice home or anything like that. I think God wants us to have, you know, homes that are functional, vehicles that run, but I think that, that it's got way out of balance. And um, so, we, you know, like I've said before, I think we've been set up for this time, and so I want to go down through some things. Um, there's a bunch couple of stuff of people putting sent in place. me a um, video or a clip to, to listen to Jim Staley talking about all of the events that are, are coming in this next month or so, and I'd, I'd heard of most of them, and then... Um, a sweet girl named Jackie sent me a something that I had not I had not known this one, and so I'm going to talk about all these. Um, what Jackie sent me was a clip that a video that Bill Sneblin did. If you don't know who Bill Sneblin is, he's he's a former occultist that I guess back in the early 70s. days he he got saved and he'd been in everything. Uh, he said that if they um, the uh, cultist told him if he ever got in trouble to go to the Mormon temple and be a Mormon. And, and so somewhere in that Mormon experience, he did find uh, Jesus, and, and he has a, a teaching about what's wrong with Mormonism and how, uh, but he came to the uh, true acceptance of Jesus, and now he, uh, he follows uh, the Jewish roots. And, but it, I knew part of what he said, but I had no idea of the date. Um, yeah, I, I had completely missed that too, baby. Uh, you know, there were, back in Eliezer Crawley's day. 120 years ago to the day. He is the, um, he's the, was the, called the most evil man in the world. He's an English occultist, ceremonial magician, um, horrible stuff that he did. And he married this woman, um, and it was April 8th, 9th, and 10th are huge feast days for the followers of Thelema. Yeah. Because this is when he married this woman named Rose Kelly, and they were on their honeymoon in Cairo, Egypt, and she went into a trance, and uh, this entity spoke all these things to him to what he called the book of the, of the law. Which is a major occult work. And so according to Bill Sneblin, these, these three days every year, are very high on on their occult calendar and their activity. Now I'd missed that part. I had never put that together with that those those specific days because usually if I know there's a day, then I'll mark it down and I'll I'll be praying way ahead of time and and so it just so happens that it starts on the day that this eclipse. April eighth. Uh, and so I do think this is significant, uh, and I think that we all need to be praying because. There's so much going on at once. It's it can't be coincidence. Now God caused the eclipse. He's the one in charge of the sun, the moon, the stars, and and everything like that. Satan tries to use them. The occult try to use them. But God's going to have His say on this thing. Uh, but I just wanted to point out some things that are all coming together 
because it does make a difference. That's why, like, if you are around an occult day, you'll you'll feel the the pressure. Now, you may not feel it at your home or, or your ministry. Or, it's but, usually when you get out in the but public. But, man, when you get out in the public, you can feel the pressure of these things. And so that's one thing that we need to be praying about. And if um, Bill Sneblin had a really good prayer. Now, he um, he changes where we say amen. I think... Uh, a lot of people change that because it's they don't want to uh, give an invocation to Amen Ra, isn't yeah. that an Egyptian yeah. God or Amen Ra? Anyway, that's what's the end. In case you're wondering, that's what the end of his prayer. But but if um, I was trying to think what that was called, I didn't write it down. Um, but it's if you just look up Bill Snevelin. And uh, April 8th, I think it would come up on YouTube if you do want to listen to that. And he did have a, a very good prayer to yeah. say during that time. He's recommend fasting and prayer for that, and, and I do too. I think this is, this is a time when we can, we can see God turn some things around. But we've got also, you know, we've talked about the eclipse, but also there's CERN activity. <laughs> they're, they're, they're firing it up on April 8th. On April 8th, and it's going to go from that day of the eclipse – and it's going to go to April 22nd. Now, April 22nd is Passover on the regular <laughs> Jewish calendar. And also, the 22nd of every month, I do extra prayer because um, the number 22 is important to Freemasonry, just like 11, 33. You know, this Aliester Crawley was big on gematria. That's why I'm always so cautious about people that start just taking numbers and numbers and numbers and numbers and doing stuff with it because um, a lot of times the enemy can have you doing that and you won't even understand you're stepping into Kabbalistic stuff. Um, but anyway, that's... <laughs> That's not coincidence. I mean, that they, they decided to do it during that period. No, okay, well, in, so in, in Freemasonry, 22 is okay. 11 is you conceive a project. 22 is you put work behind the project. 33 is you fulfill the project. And so, and so is this them announcing <laughs> we're putting work to the project? And, and I'm sure it when is. You, when you look at all this stuff, and I, I don't know if we're at this time or not, but can you imagine uh, a convergence of what man does that opens up the abyss and you have this transugenic horde coming out that we see in Revelation 9. Uh, I think it would be divine justice if it was, if it was man's own folly that, that opens it up. And I, I think CERN may be a part of that. I mean, when you, when you look at all the different things, it's, it's like, you know, in the, uh, in the old movie, The Orient Express, the inspector says, there's too many clues. <laughs> it's, it's like they're... they're pulling out all the stops they're putting the thing into overdrive because they're they're thinking that if they can add 22 that they can add work to their plan they're going to get it done this time and so i think that's why that i think that's why god is calling us to prayer god's calling us yeah. to be vigilant oh, it's, to it's awaken. definitely a time we've got to spend time in prayer another thing that is going to happen <clears throat> and i think it's it could be I think they say it, it's possible to see the, the devil's comet. It's going to be passing by Earth for the first time in more than seven decades. Um, and I think it's going to be uh, where you can see it during the eclipse, maybe. Uh, but it's, it's the same time this is coming through. And so... It says, uh, as far as being able to see the devil coming, it will be closest to the sun in April 2024, closest to the earth in June of 24. Um, so anyway, that's, that's something that's, that's right now, that's happening right now. <clears throat> We've also gotten NASA is launching three nut rockets named after Egypt, Egyptian serpent deity, Apep. Apep is also known as Apophis in Greek. It was the Egyptian god of chaos. And, and also and it's art also battles the, and worship. <laughs> and it's also the serpent god that rules the night in Egyptian mythology. And, and so, <laughs> so now you know do, this. Do you is, see a clue? <laughs> this isn't all coincidence. There's no way they're trying to to get this big amalgamation of things. And I'm I'm ass assuming I haven't seen these rockets, but I'm assuming they're shaped like a phallic symbol, like it's they all, all rockets are. are yeah. uh, and so is that is that to go up into this because they're supposedly. Uh, gathering information 
when the eclipse occurs. So you've got this, this circle in the sky, and they're sending up phallic symbols. Is that for the birthing of something? I mean, that sounds like something they would do. Yes. I don't know, but, but I'm going to ask God to <clears throat> any evil thing that is being birthed that there would be a miscarriage, <laughs> that well, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't come to fruition. You know, when we brought Bonhoeffer over to, uh, to help found NASA, What's interesting is that he brought all his Nazi ideology with him, and we, we see that with Operation Paperclip. Uh, we also see it with uh, Skull and Bones, that the first person in, they have, they have this doctrine that, the, the, that the, the one who establishes sets the foundation for any organization. So what you'll, it, it's like you have, you have Bonhoeffer uh, in charge of NASA. You had a Nazi over the SS that begin creating the CIA. Uh, you have so many skull and bones like do the American Psychological Society, the American Historical Society, and they, they set the, the very foundation and the direction of all these agencies, and they intertwine them with, with occult meaning. And that's mm-hmm. why every, every single rocket is either to a, a, a god in Greek, a god in the it's in Egyptian. It's always, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's always, always this weird occult stuff. Another thing that is going to happen is there are two groups, broods of cicadas, that are going to emerge at this same time. And says this double emergence is the first time this has happened in 221 years. I don't know if you guys have cicadas where you are. We do here. I don't know if they're all over the United States or not. But I can tell you back... I don't know, 30-some years ago, we had some kind of an emergence that was different than normal. I, we hear them every year, but there will be just like a low, maybe, uh, sound that you'll hear of them. You recognize it when you go outside. It's not one of my favorite sounds. Um, you know, there's a couple of things that I don't like because of things when I was a kid. One of them's I don't like to hear a whippoorwill. Um, I like... Uh, I like little peep frog sounds in the spring and things, but but and this quails and but when that that happened over thirty years ago, man, it was deafening. It was horrible. Every time you walked out, that's what you heard this this increasing hum, and then you'd go back and hum, and it was it was just agitating. It would it would affect you physically, mm-hmm. and you know, there's a lot about your environment, and so here we got these things. Somebody, one of the news agencies I looked at said that they were locusts. Well, they're not, they're not locusts by description, but they're horrible things as far as I'm concerned. And so I just, I think we even need to pray over that, you know, it, that any resonance that is, is being put out by them, that they could be used. Um, they call them broods. That doesn't sound good, does it? <laughs> well, anyway, what I believe all of this is, uh, now, this is just my opinion. I have no exterior thing that I can find to uh, substantiate what I think other than what I heard programmed multiple say years ago. And uh, one pointed to their Timex watch because I was talking about Jesus. I was talking about that uh, God's more powerful and things like that. And they pointed to their Timex watch, and they, they had one of their back parts that was was up, and uh, I just started telling them, well, let me tell you. I said, yeah, I know there's this time X coming, and now this is I'm talking, a part of me is talking that knows about something. I didn't have a clue about it. I just listened. That's essentially how that happened, Um, and they said, but it's not going to go the way that you've been told because you've been told you're going to take over. I'm telling you, God says no. God says it's not going to happen. It's not going to go the way you've been told. And I believe the program multiples that have been told about this and the, and see as a program multiple, all they're going to have is the information that's fed to them and everything that they would see when they were in the conscious realm that they had, they could connect to is going to point to, hey, it's going just like they planned. Now, the only thing I have seen so far that would have caught the the parts of those people's attention was the fact that Hillary Clinton didn't get into office because they were told, just like I was, she was going to get in there, and there was nothing going to stop it. And so things have been interrupted. But let me tell you something. If this time X doesn't go like they were told, 
you will have a whole bunch of people in distress, a whole bunch of people that are going to be um, probably just walking around shaking because if this doesn't happen, their whole world falls, falls apart as far as they're concerned. But it'll be a good time for us to minister the gospel. Yes. And show, show that God's more powerful because that, they, they strategically have been shown that, hey, look, we get everything we, we want done. All I can tell you this, and you can take this to the bank. If God didn't allow Biden in the White House, he wouldn't be there. He no. let him get in there because people still weren't seeing what's going on. No, I, I think what they did is, okay, we got a guy in the office that's friendly toward the church, and so, well, we can kick back and we go back to sleep. And no, you know, that when, when Trump was in the office, and so God was, you know, I think God puts people in to the office either because we prayed or to stir us to prayer. Well, this was definitely a start of prayer because yes. it's been a, and, and listen, I have been so thankful to God praying over and over that we have not been in a war up to now. <laughs> yes. Because he would have the military industrial complex saying, let's get in war. Let's do whatever we got to do to get in war. That's what would have, would have happened. So it's a miracle. We've made it this far. We're almost to the end of his four years. and have, That's a miracle. But, but I'm going to tell you, there, there are some, some things that God's getting ready to do. And I'm going to have Mike talk about Joel chapter 2 because that's, that's where I went to as, as God was showing me all this. Um, but, but imagine this, if you will. Okay, the, everything's set, right? Looks like, man, the enemy has readied his armies. And we have got this thing down, and it is rolling. We got this reset going. We're going to have it where nobody owns a house. We're going to have it where, where the United States is so invaded. There is no way you can, you can outdo this. No way you can stop this. And, and I don't know what process God is going to use to take America back. But I can tell you this is not going to happen because God's going to raise his remnant up and they're going to be in one accord and we're going to show forth the power of Almighty God. And then in this day that the enemies deceived all of us, our children have been exposed to spellbinding witchcraft that has led them astray. Yes. I'm telling you the power of God's getting ready to fall. And it's going to fall so hard that people are going to land on their knees. And they're going to see who's in charge of everything. They're going to see who's the king of the universe. They're going to see what our God can do when his people. See, he's, he's been working on all this. He, he works this plan together and orchestrates this. So you could, just like he did in the Old Testament. Do you see now? Do you see now what your sin does? Do you see you've been deceived? Okay, how about turning back? How about let's get back to, to what I've told you to do, and then let's, let's roll the enemy, just like you roll an old tumbling weed, you know, out in the, in the desert, out just blow, let's, let's see God roll them, roll them, and roll them. And that's what we're going to see. If there's a wind going to blow, it's going to blow them away. Yes. You know, when you look at the book of Joel, and uh, I remember years ago there was a, uh, and I didn't realize until you brought it up that Kenneth Copeland had actually wrote it, uh, you know, talks about the Lord utters his voice before his army. Well, I, I know he sang it. I don't know if, if oh, I, he wrote it, but he sang it. But he sang it, and then one day, I, I, and I, I taught on this before, one day I actually went back and just read the book of Joel as a whole, and I, and I had just finished reading the book of Revelation, and it just dawned on me, we're not that army, because that is an army of God's judgment. It's, it's this transugenic horde, and in fact, when you... You read the terminology, when you read Revelation chapter 9, they have teeth like lion and everything. That's in the book of Joel. Mm -hmm. That this, that this trans-eugenic horde, that this, the, the, the representatives of locusts, this, this army without number begins coming in and devouring. Uh, and I, I, th I think there is a time that we're going to see that released from the pit, okay? Uh, but I also think what I, what I call prophetic temporal echoes, that we see the things repeating over and over again until it's, ultimate fulfillment and what do you do with the church that is drunk on the wine of babylon that has been in this techno sorcery slumber that's all about the best life now about getting your stuff now about having the best life now and as long as you have the the uh, the affluence of laodicea they're content 
If you're God, how do you get their attention? You take it away. Mm -hmm. That's what the book of Joel is about. In fact, uh, one of the ones that jumped out at me is verse 5 of chapter 1. Awake, you drunkards, and weep, and wail, all you drinkers of wine, because the sweet wine has been cut off from your mouth. Okay? (laughs) I want to follow God in the good times and the bad times, and I want to make sure that my hope is never in my affluence, is never in my checking account. My my identity isn't in the car that I drive, the house that I have. My identity is in Christ. Why is that so important, Mary? Because if the devil took everything away from you and your identity is in Christ, you've lost nothing because you don't identify with what you have. You identify with who you know. Well, that's it. Okay. And so we, we see Joel chapter 2, okay, God has risen up this army to judge God's people because as long as they had affluence, they refused to repent. As long as they're comfortable, they refuse to repent. And it, it reminds me of the, 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 uh, where it talks about how that God stirs up the, the nest of the eagles. Well, the mama eagle she would put fur and everything else in the bottom of that nest while the eaglets were little. When it came time for them to fly, she would pull out that fur and there were these big old thorns. It's like, okay, you're now motivated to learn how to fly. Let me tell you something, guys. We're coming into a time that you're either going to trust God or you have nothing to trust. But trusting God, we have a promise. When we read the book of Joel, we see this army coming. We see God calling us to repentance. We see uh, in, in verse 13, put on sackcloth and lament, O priest. Wail, O ministers of the altar. Uh, go and pass the night in sackcloth, O ministers of God. Because you, you see God taking them out of their affluence. They're, they're, they're taking them out of everything they trusted because they trusted everything but him. And all of a sudden... God says, you know what, if you repent and return back to me, in the midst of all this stuff, I'm going to restore what Mm -hmm. the canker worm and the locust has eaten. That's it. That I'm going to restore and I'm going to protect. And I mean, when when we read it, Joel is what Peter chose to preach his first sermon on the day of Pentecost. Joel started... The fulfillment of Joel started on the day of Pentecost when, pre- when, when Peter preached this. That's when the last days started. We're now at the end of the last days. And he says, listen, he says, I'm going to restore the years. I'm gonna, if, if you return to me, there's nothing that the devil can take from you that God cannot restore if we know him. We need to have the heart of Job in this area. And Job, he he knew some of God. He doesn't know what we, I mean, he didn't have the written word of God. Joel, or, or Job happened before Abraham. He didn't have the Abrahamic covenant. All he had is one promise of God. I'll protect your life. All the other blessings he had was gravy. I mean, it was just because he was following God, he was blessed. And I remember reading the book of Job, and real, and and I was reading a book by Wilford Reddit, who was the son-in-law of John G. Lake, and he showed how that Job had no other promise except that God would protect his life. So he had one promise of God. Believer, how many promises do you have in the Word of God? All he had was one promise. Do you know what the turning point was for Job? He didn't understand what was going on. He didn't understand that the the enemy had found a way in and, and that God even pointed it out to him to, to bring him to a new place. But Mary, in the midst of all that, he had, he had lost his children. His wife is saying, why don't you curse God with, and die? And he's covered from head to foot with boils. And he looks up out of that. And you know what Job's integrity was? He said, though he slay me, I'll still praise him. That was the turning point Because what did the devil tell God? You take all this stuff away, he'll curse you. He ended up with twice as much. There's there's almost a pattern of Joel in the book of Job. 
And we, we see it in the book of Revelation. God says in, in chapter 2, he says, I'll restore the years that the swarm of the locusts have eaten and the grasshopper, the destroyer, the cutter, my great army which I sent among you, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God. But he doesn't stop there. You see, there's going to be this great awakening because he's going to, God is going to pull the, the cushion out of the nest. It's, it's time for you to learn how to fly. Do you know well, somebody's why? Somebody's got to gather in the harvest. <laughs> when, you, when you see the, the pattern that's laid out in the book of Job, the transugenic cord comes in. It awakens the body to really get right with God. It, it takes all their excuses away. It, it, all of a sudden, there's a sense of, of, of necessity. We can't play the church anymore. we got to be the church. Let me tell you something. If there was ever a season that we need to quit playing the church and start being the church, it's right now. Yeah. Okay, And God says, when you do that, I'll begin restoring, but more than that, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. There's, going to, there's this, the, in, in, in Israel, you had the, the early rains, and then you had the rains right, toward the, right before harvest time that helped finish out the harvest. And what he's talking about here is we're getting ready once we, there's, there's, for us to get to God's reset. For us to get to God's place, it's going to be a rough road. It is. But it's going to be a purifying road. Doesn't the book of Malachi tell us that the that Messiah will show up in his temple with a refiner's fire and a fuller mm-hmm. soap? We are going to go through a time of refinement, but we're going to come out in the end. And, and guys, we, we see this pattern even in the life of Jesus. He was driven by the Spirit into the wilderness, where he was tested for 40 days. That was, that was his refiner's fire. But when he came out of the wilderness, the Bible says he came out in the power of the Spirit. You see, the, the reason that, that God is going to shake and wake the church is because he has a plan to pour out his power on the, on, on the church for us to get in the final harvest. It's after this outpouring, he says, and I will show wonders in the heavens and, and the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke, and the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. So before we get to the Valley of Armageddon, there's going to be some stuff happening. But he is going to pour out his spirit on, on the remnant mm-hmm. so they can get in the final harvest. What, what Peter was saying is it's time to begin bringing in the harvest. And that was the spring harvest that we see in the time of Peter. We're getting to this final harvest before the coming of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And he wants to pour out his spirit, but it, it, it will only happen when we get really right with God and we quit playing games. Mm-hmm. We quit making excuses. Let me tell you something. Nothing causes people to quit making excuses as when the prophecy starts hitting the fan. You can't preach best life now when everything's falling apart. You can't, you, you, can't, you can't pat people on the head. We need to get rid of this feel-good teachings in the body of Christ where all we hand out are warm fuzzies. Mm-hmm. Joel said you need to hit the altar. You need to, be, you need to be weeping like a bride that just lost the bridegroom that she had plans for her whole life, and he was just killed in war. And now she's mourning for the love that she had her whole life and she never got to fulfill. That's what God is calling us to. We're going to have to get really real with God in this hour because the enemy is pulling out all the stops. there. Yes, and I think this is. is just the beginning of the convergence of occult power that mm-hmm. we're going to begin seeing. And so all these games that we have played, they're all going to have to stop. And let me tell you something, I don't care what movement you're in, if, if the Jesus of the Bible is not centristic to it, you're in trouble. I want to say that again. If Jesus is not the center to glorify him, I live for my king, I die for my king, why do I keep the commandments? Because my king gave them. My king came and shed his blood for me on the cross. He redeemed me when I did not deserve it. And then he rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. I serve him, and I serve him alone. That's got to be our, it's for Jesus, it's by Jesus, it's through Jesus. 
Let me tell you something. If you're any movement that has left the true Jesus of the Bible and has tried to give us a watered-down version of Jesus, that sin is okay, and that, and that all the crazy things that are going on are okay, it's another gospel. And you're in a vulnerable position. You are, you're preparing to get eaten by locusts. And not by God's design. No. This is the enemy set us up. When we, when we look at this and we look at the book of Joel, they're coming in. Those that hit the altar in repentance made it through to the outpouring. It separated the wheat and the chaff in the body. It separated the sheep and the goat in the body. It, it separated and revealed those who really knew their God. You see, there's, I think it's Daniel chapter 11, verse 32 is one of my favorite verses. That when the Antichrist is at his ascendancy, and I mean he, him and the false prophet is doing their thing, there's a, there's a group of people that become a pain in his blessed assurance. It says, and there's be those that know their God. And, mm-hmm. and when you look in the Hebrew, you have the Antichrist doing great exploits, and then you have this remnant, and it's the same Hebrew phraseology. They're matching the supernatural that the Antichrist and the false prophet is doing. This remnant are matching it with the power of God, calling people to repentance, and they're healing the sick, and they're casting out devils, and they're, they're stopping plagues, and they're seeing supernatural provision. There will those who know their God, and they will do great exploits. You see, this, this is the hour. We, we all have a decision to make here. The kingdom of darkness is pulling out all the stops. They're saying, we're going to be in ascendancy. You can't stop us. Isn't that what the Antichrist is going to say? You can't stop us. The spirit of the Antichrist and the spirit of error are in overdrive. What we have got to choose is I choose the spirit of Christ. I choose the spirit of truth. I Mm -hmm. choose the kingdom of God. God is not going to allow the enemy to bring his A game without God having his own A game. That's right. And he always has a remnant. He always has a remnant. And I think there's a lot more of us than anyone knows. And what we have got to determine in our heart is if anybody's going to be the remnant, I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. If anybody's going to be faithful to the word of God, I'm going to be. If anybody is going to show the joy of the Lord in the midst of all the craziness going on, I'm going to show it. If anybody's going to hear the voice of God, I'm going to hear him. If anybody's going to move in the power of God, I'm going to move. Because he has brought me into the kingdom for such a time as this. We just got through st- yeah. celebrating Purim. It goes in, goes in sequence. Yes, it goes you know, in sequence. Turns things around. We're heading toward victory. On Passover, that's victory time when Jesus rose and victorious over death, hell, and the grave. You know, we, we have Christians that will run from conference to conference wanting to see miracles, and I think we've almost got to the place of wanting it because we want entertainment. Do you know when you really see a miracle, Mary, is when your back is up against the wall and there's no way out unless God gives a miracle. Well, we've seen him do it. We've seen him do it over and over and over again. We testify of his greatness. We testify. There is not a situation the enemy can put you in that Jesus cannot become the way maker. That's right. Come on now. And one of the things he's going to do, we we see this matching. What's getting ready to happen to the world is most of the prosperity of the world has come because of the Protestant movement, of that, of that Judeo-Christian heritage. And then we've had the Masons come in and so many other that have created wealth on the backs of God's people. Just like the Pharaoh created the wealth of Egypt on the back of God's people in Egypt. What did God do when he was judging Egypt? He stripped everything Away, He stripped all the wealth. He stripped all the, the, the strength that Egypt had because it built it on the backs mm-hmm. of God's people. And as he delivered them, they walked out. They walked out with the wealth of yeah, Egypt. You it. see, we have always been looking for this, this transfer of wealth. It comes with God's judgment. It comes with God's yeah, judgment on does. Babylon. It comes with God's judgment on Egypt. Yeah. So if I'm in the right position with God and my heart's right, you see, you don't have to know everything that I know as a theologian. You don't, have to, you, don't, you don't have to be versed in Greek and Hebrew and all these different things. All that helps. If your heart's right and your heart's pure, 
God's going to make this word come alive, and the Holy Spirit is going to adjust you yeah. step by step. That's right. You say, well, Mike, I've been asleep for so long. You know, God knew that before the foundation of the world, and he just woke you up. Don't you think God has enough power to wake you up at the right time to get you to where you need to be before the prophecy hits the fan? You see, I, I love the, the, the strategic nature of God because so many times the enemy thinks, I've got him. I've got this thing wound up. I got everybody in such bondage. Now he thinks that right now. <laughs> I, I I imagine. What do you what do you think the devil thought when Moses disappeared out of Egypt for forty years? I don't have to worry about him. He comes back with a stick. Doesn't come back with an army. Comes back with a shepherd's staff. Oh, he came back. Because see, Moses is a type and shadow of Jesus, right? Adam lost, when, when, when God told him to replenish the earth, that's Malay in Hebrew, which literally can be interpreted, the shepherd's staff that can stop chaos. Mm. Oh, that's a word for right <laughs> oh, now. Boy, it is. That's why. Man. <laughs> and so Moses brought the shepherd's staff that could stop chaos mm. and mm, brought mm, plagues mm, down mm. on Egypt. He didn't need an army. He didn't need a sword. He didn't, he didn't need a spear. He just needed that shepherd's staff, and he brought the greatest nation at that time down to its knees, delivered God's people, and brought them around Mount Sinai. You know, Jesus is the good shepherd. He came with his own staff, and Mary, everywhere he went, he stopped chaos. He stopped chaos. The book of Acts tells us that he went about doing good, destroying all the works of the enemy. What's the works of the enemy? Chaos That's right. and confusion. And boy, it's, it's flowing right now. When we come back to our authority as a believer, remember when Jesus, after he resurrected, said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth, you go. He went back, and we have a double anointing. We have not only the uh, shepherd staff of Jesus, we also have the shepherd staff of that Adam lost in the garden. It's a double staff. And Jesus said, now you go. Now you go. You go, and in my name, you'll cast out devils. You'll heal the sick. If they, even if they try to poison you, it can't stop you. You know, we see that in the book of Acts when Paul was, they had crashed on an on a, on a island after him being shipwrecked. And an adder came out, came out and bit him. Now, if you don't know anything about adder, adders, his, his life expectancy should have been about 45 seconds. That's how poisonous they are. Those, all those pagans in that ship watched him shake the adder off into the fire to protect them, kill the adder. They're all waiting for him to die. And he starts preaching the gospel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just when they thought they had him. Well, this... And God is able. The Egyptian god of chaos may be going to see the power of God one more time. Apophis may go apophis. <laughs> when we walk in our authority, and we're completely submitted to Christ, everywhere we go, we should stop chaos. Yeah, the peace of God goes with us. And peace is the the peace of God the, shall soon, <laughs> soon crush, crush Satan. Satan underneath our That's feet. That's right. That's right. We got some stompers on for a reason. <laughs> so in in the days ahead, I don't care what the occult do. If God's people pray, God is always going to have a Goshen for His people. Mm-hmm. God is always have safety for His people. That's right. There'll be a place for food. Never seen the righteous forsaken or their the seed, seed begging, begging for, for bread. Food. And so we need to understand that God's got a plan. This, mm-hmm. None of this has, has taken him by surprise. He's already on the other end of this. That's, a, that's why I yeah. love the uh, omnipresence of God. Actually, it's a good thing that all these things are coming together because that's when, that's when God shows up. Yes. He had, as in our lives, every time, every time there would be this big gathering and, oh, boy, you're gone, and everybody's looking, looking like we got you, God shows up. And so don't, don't let fear come in on you. We're going to be taken care of no matter what. And, and I want God to take this nation back. Yes. It's in a horrible shape. 
it is far from the early covenant that was made over this nation. And, 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 the, the, and what the Freemasons did when they, they brought in this, this alternate you know, covenant, and they, they put up all these edifices in honor of Egypt, Babylon. Now they got all these, Osiris. Uh, these things that are just outright satanic, and you can see what they are. Uh, but God's going to do enough shaking that, that the evil is going to have to be shook out of here. It is, and when you between Freemasonry uh, and and the technocrats, technocracy, it's to the very core of our nation, and so there's going to a lot be shaken. And let's just give a shout out to the descendants of the Freemasons yes. that have been so brave to say the prayers and renounce Freemasonry and get set free, and then they will be the greatest fighters. Yes, in fact, I've seen some of the greatest deliverance ministers, some of the greatest ones that are doing this, were all descendants. Mm-hmm. Uh, God fact, turns it around. I remember one year, I guess it's probably about 10 years ago, I heard from this one guy, and I mean, he was an evangelist, and I mean, he absolutely uh, would bring people to their knees with the power of God in repentance and stuff. And Aliester, or not, uh, Albert Pike was his great, great, great grandfather. Oh, what justice, what justice. <laughs> and turn that around man and, you talk about it turn around in a generation in his in his email he said i knew i came from absolute evil and so i needed an absolute savior and he found him he, <laughs> found, him. <laughs> he found him and i tell you what he's he's causing hell to fall apart everywhere mm-hmm. he goes and i believe that there are a myriad of them oh i know just waiting are. to be released in the shadows i know there are they're just they've just been in the back doing their prayers getting ready yeah so, Father, whether we have eclipses and rockets and CERN and locusts and, and all these different things, you're still in control. Yes, you are. There ain't, and the Bible says that you even put a limiters on the devil. There's, only, there's, there's places he can't go. There's mm-hmm. things that he can't do. There's limits to what he can do. You have already set this thing, and you've set it up for our victory. Father, we ask that just the grace would take hold. Father, give us grace to repent as deeply as we need to repent to get right with you. Let nothing of Babylon be in us. Let not the, the, the yeast of iniquity be in us. Let, let us have nothing in us that resonates with the Antichrist or the kingdom of darkness at all. But Father, through and through, let us be found in Christ. Yes. Let us be found in the kingdom. Let us be found in, in obedience to him and filled with your spirit. Spirit, Father. Father, we, we have this expectancy that you're getting ready to pour out your spirit, that latter rain, which is going to be greater than the one that we see in the book of Acts. We're getting ready to see a greater outpouring, not so that any man can get the glory, but so that Jesus can rule and reign and that he would have a people and that he would have a harvest. This whole thing is about seeing every soul possible redeemed and clutched out of the fires of hell, Father. Bring in your harvest, Father. Bring in your harvest. Give us the grace to repent. Give us the grace to mature. Give us the grace to endure, Father, we ask in Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.